Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equation, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Welcome back. In this lecture, I want to talk about Appendix D, center manifolds depending on parameters. So center manifold theory was developed in chapter 10, and as I mentioned, it, um, it was the hardest and most difficult chapter, I think, in terms of uh, advanced ideas and uh, not being able to go into things as deeply as I wanted. But there, there is an important part that I left out of that chapter that I thought it was a good idea to do that, but I want to now talk about it in... The, the context of this appendix. So center manifolds depending on parameters. Now we looked at a lot of parameter dependent uh, systems when we were looking at bifurcation theory and there is a relation there and that should be clear because center manifold theory was useful when we had non-hyperbolic fixed points and bifurcation always was associated with um, non-hyperbolic fixed points. So let's see how they might be related together. So here's the setup. We can have more general setups, but this is a good place to start. D1. So it looks exactly like the setup for center manifold theory ex that we developed in chapter 10, except for a little wrinkle that's going to get even more wrinkled as we go along. x odd equals ax plus f of x, y, comma, mu. Mu is the parameter vector of parameters, um, p-dimensional, rp. y dot is by plus g of xy mu. And a and b are going to be constants. Um, it may be possible to put parameters in them, but I'm not going to do that here. So the usual assumptions, a is a c by c matrix of real numbers having eigenvalues with zero real parts. b is an S by S matrix of real numbers having eigenvalues with negative real parts. F and G are the nonlinear functions now with mu involved in there. This, this is the condition on the nonlinearity. All right, now what I want to do is reformulate slightly the original setup for center manifold theory, including the parameters, and what you'll see is that uh, the parameters fit in naturally and, and with the right interpretation. The exact same theory goes through, but the interpretation in terms of how the parameter dependence fits into the uh, three main theorems, existence, uh, approximation, and the stability results, um, are pretty profound. Okay, we're going to include the parameters as new dependent variables, mu dot equals zero. Now, when we do that, that effectively enlarges the center part of these equations. Okay, so we can think of zero. It's a Zero, is, is a p by p matrix of zeros acting on a column vector of dimension p. All right, so the linearized system looks then would look exactly like this. And what we see with this interpretation is that y equals zero is still the center subspace because the mu dot term introduces only zero eigenvalues. It's as trivial as you can get. And the stable subspace is obtained by just setting x and mu both to zero. All right, now we just, you know, the old x variables are now x comma mu. So the center manifold is a function of x and mu. It's a graph over the center variables. It's a function of the x dynamical variable and the mu parameter. And so 
we have uh, we we can have an approximation equation for so and the approximation theorem goes through exactly the same and but the significant part here is that um, the uh, stability result says that um, stability in the center manifold is good and the conclusions we make there are valid for the entire system now that is true for mu in a full neighborhood of mu equals zero because remember x equals zero mu equals zero is the fixed point but the but the center manifold is a function of x and mu x small mu small and so we we get center manifold valid in a neighborhood in mu also so if there is a bifurcation that occurs the center manifold captures all bifurcating solutions because the other part of the theorem says that if we start near the center manifold in the full phase space, we asymptotically approach a trajectory within the center manifold. Again, you, this takes a little while to get your head around, but the main idea is these parameters just give us more center directions. Fine. Think of x getting larger, but in a trivial way. And then we just think of re reinterpreting the theorem. Okay. And then I have an example, which I urge you to look at. This does have a parameter, and this is a bifurcation type problem. And it has a, and we include the parameters. We have this two by two block. And then we have a single stable direction. There's a little linear algebra that needs to be done to put it this in block diagonal form, and but that's done in the example. Again, I didn't want to go through this in great detail, because even once I include parameters, for a simple two by two problem, I enlarge these things, enlarge the problem to three dimensions, and it gets a little more complicated to compute. Um, compute the necessary quantities, but the details are worked out in this example. Okay, this is important for you to know if you go further in applications use of bifurcation theory using center manifold theory. Okay, that's all I want to say about this appendix, and in the next appendix, talk about Hamiltonian systems. So bye for now.